just kind of talk about your time in the league. You know what? It was a, uh, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was enjoyable, but it was tough because uh, the year that I came out was the lockout year. So it was a, it was a year that, uh, you know, we didn't really get a lot of time with the, um, cause it was a shortened season. So we didn't get a lot of time with the team. So the fact that my team was a veteran team, you know, on, on our team for that year, it was like Cliff Robinson, Jason Kidd, Phoenix Long, Suns, Phoenix Suns, right? 98, yeah, 98. Gugliata, uh, you know, Penny Hardaway. We had, a, we had a stack, you know, really good veteran team and, the fact that we didn't, the, the rookies didn't get a chance to really get onboarded properly, and we had a, a shortened season. So we were a playoff team, so we had to win a certain amount of games. So I think the, the organization didn't necessarily trust the rookies as much as they would on a normal season where you get the summer league, you get to really get onboarded properly. So uh, that was a tough, you know, uh, transition. Um, and then, you know, the fact that, you know, I was a guy my entire career that plays, you know, 35, 40 minutes a game, like on every yeah. team that I'm on. And oh, yeah. So you, you, yeah. So you, oh, you yeah. learn how to play that way. You know, you, you learn how to play where you're getting a lot of minutes. You got play through mistakes. Kind of play yeah, through you mistakes. mistakes. You got time to kind of hit the rhythm, let the ball, you know, the game come to you. And then you're thrown out in a situation where, you might get five minutes here. You might get, you know, five minutes there. And for me, I wasn't the kind of guy that was just going to go out and kind of, you know, try to find my rhythm and let the game come to me. It was either like I'm going to either go out here and shoot five shots, and if I make them, then I'm going to stay in and get 15 more minutes, or I'm going to miss all of them and get yanked out the game, but I'm going to go out, you know, I'm going to go out swinging. So that's how I had the mentality I had. I wasn't used to playing in those short, you know, um, blocks yeah. of time. And so, you know, that was a that was a tough time for me. Um, I know the Suns wanted to re-sign me for two more years after my second year, and I was just so we we had Sean Marion came in uh, my second year. You know, uh, Penny was still there. Rex Chapman had signed a big deal, um, and so I, you know, I, I I didn't see any room to the floor uh, with the amount of minutes that I wanted to actually get, and I think. You know, a little bit of your ego gets in the way when you look around and you see guys that you felt like you were better than. You know, at the time, it was like, you know, Catino Mobley was one of the guys that, you know, came in. He was my position, and, and you know, Cat could play. Cat can really play. But, you know, that's one of our, our peers, and, you yeah. know, he was given the keys to, you know, to that team. You know, it was him and Stevie Francis were, you know, they were the young bucks. At, at Houston that were, you know, uh, they gave him the keys and they were out there rocking. So you look around, you see them, and you see Jason Williams, white chocolate, up in Seattle coming down, just, you know, he's a torch, J. Kidd. Every time we play, that dude, uh, he yeah. used to give him the business. So oh. you see him doing his thing. And, you know, you see a lot of other guys your age, and you're like, man, I need to get somewhere I can play. And so I think me not signing that two-year extension and giving myself another two years to kind of, Get a, get a, assimilated and, and realizing that that was a playoff team that I was on in comparison to, to where other guys, young guys might have been rocking out on teams that weren't as good. Um, you know, I, I should have just been patient, played my role. Uh, but, you know, you, you live and you learn. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't blame you yourself for being a competitor and wanting to play. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that sounds like that was your issue. And knowing you, and knowing your history of never being pulled out of games, I mean, you played the most minutes in the history of UCLA. I mean, just like 50 minutes a game, it seemed like every game for years. It's just like all of us on the bench couldn't get none of Toby's burn. I'd sub in for everybody on the floor except Toby <laughs> Bailey. No, I'm serious. I'd sub in for Chuck. I'd sub in for, I'd sub in for all these guys. JR, yeah, go get Jelani. <laughs> but Toby, Toby's ass is out there for 40. And you know why, guys? I'll tell you why. Toby... He was like, he can make things happen defensively and offensively. You just didn't know, you didn't know what was going to happen to this guy. This guy might get a steal. He might get a block. He might get the key rebound, you know, get up in the square on you. And then on offense, he may knock down a three. He may shit on your whole team. You know, he may offensive rebound, pump fake, pump fake, layup. I mean, it was just mid-range jumpers. So as a, as a, as a basketball guy at the time, I was kind of like, man, this is crazy. This dude need to come out. But as I got older and looked back on it, I'm like, damn, man, Toby, Toby was ridiculous out there. And you were top 10 in like four or five categories, six, seven categories by the time you finished at UCLA. I mean, it's just you were just such a well-rounded guy, a well-rounded 
a, a basketball player. I always had a lot of respect for that. Um, keep staying on the NBA. So what, you, you know, they, they offered you the two-year deal. What was your next move when you turned it down? I turned it down. I went to, uh, I went to Chicago and um, I, I got down to, basically they were like, you, you're going to make the team come to Chicago. I had a few teams that were uh, interested. And so, you know, I felt good about like moving and going to a different place. And, um, yeah. you know, I got to Chicago and then it got, got down to the end and uh, did make the team. Uh, Who's your coach? It, Who's your coach? It was Coach Floyd, uh, Tim Floyd. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it didn't work out. It, you know, it was one of those, it didn't even feel right when I was there. You know, I'm a West Coast kid, you yeah. know, we saw out there and it's just snowing and it's not, you know, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't the right feel. Um, and, and, and so, you know, I, I started my, my, you know, my European career after that. And, um, you know, I went one year uh, in, where was I, Greece. Uh, I think it was what in city? Greece. No, I was in Italy. I was in Italy. My first where? Year. Was, where? What city? Uh, in Imola, right near Bologna. It's okay. like the closest. Yeah. So I was I was there for one year. Sean Rester was on the team. I don't know if you remember him. Michigan State. Michigan State, bro. Get out of hey, here. Sean Rester, Play. Shane Hill, Shane okay. Hill, the uh, Australian. Yeah, point yeah, guard. yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Got yeah. in a fight with Vince Carter. No question. Yeah. What, 5'10, 5'10 PG? How tall is he? Tiny, tiny yeah. blonde hair, you know. Yeah. He, he he was on the team, um, and you know, so we I I played one year there, and then I actually came back and uh and and went to camp with the Knicks, and okay. actually made the Knicks. I I made that squad, and in the first week, first week or week and a half after I made the team, uh, McDyce had gone down with an injury, and they needed to bring in a uh, a big in his for his replacement, and I got released. Uh, after like a week, yeah, and I was I was crushed. Let me so, ask you this, Toby. I, I hate to interrupt you, but at that moment you get released, man. After yeah. you go through the high, so you you bounced overseas, you came home. You know, the whole time overseas, man, you just trying to finish that season out to get this tryout for the next year and get back in the league. So that's everything. So it was basically everything. Yeah. How did how did that affect you? What what did you do? How did you respond to when you got cut by the Knicks, man? Mm. Now that was tough. Uh, you know, that was tough. But New York had the same feel as L.A., you know, just energy, it was, it was a big city. So I was I was feeling good about being in New York. Um, you know, it, it, it was it was tough. Uh, but, you know, it, it is life. And I learned a lot from it. Um, you know, and looking back, it, you know, it, it all happened for a reason, man. It, it you know, I, I can go into it. And, and, you know, when you tell people this, you know, they look at you, they look at you with the side eye like, yeah, whatever, yeah. that's that that's your, you know, the 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 commentary you you have like you know you you kind of created in your head to explain you know going over your the narrative, things. your oh, narrative. You know, the narrative. You know, <laughs> you're okay with it, and everything happens for a reason. But I truly believe like I wouldn't have been the same person if I didn't have that experience in the NBA and overseas. Um, the perspective you get from from just seeing it on all sides and living overseas is is, is amazing. I mean. I came back from, uh, you know, I'm, I'm playing on a good team in Italy, getting paid, you know, good money, tax free, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and you come back home and I'm sitting there in the locker room um, for New York. And, you know, uh, after practice, you know, we have the massage tables going, three or four people getting massages, fully catered meal. We got guys over here playing, um, playing pool. And I was just sitting there and I was just like, man, I, I'm so happy to be back. Like, I truly appreciate it. Not like when the first time I came through and I played for Phoenix. This time I really appreciated it. And I saw a guy that had been in the league from, you know, from, from day one, like this ninth year there. And he was, he was going off on the equipment manager because there was, there was no red Gatorade in the, the, uh, Valid, 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 very valid, very valid, very valid. Good job, good job, whoever that. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I thought you would. I thought you would. Feel him. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sitting back and I'm like, I, I, his, pers I mean, his perspective and his just his outlook on life. I just felt sorry for him. And no matter if he was making you know millions of dollars, I was like, this guy, this is the worst problem. He's like belittling this. 
this manager because there's no red Gatorades and there's every Gatorade on earth in here, protein shakes, everything. Mm -hmm. But it's just that type of, uh, you know, uh, being worldly and being able to see, you know, all aspects of, of life, you know, I think really changes you as a person. And I, I, I wouldn't change anything. And so you retired from the game in 2011? Yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah ar around there. You finished up in Germany, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Okay. And then out of Germany, you had a partner that you had worked with in Germany, was your agent. I remember Dean kind of started yeah. out with him. And then so that kind of got you in the agent game. Talk about your journey through the player re representation game. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I started off uh, my second and third year in Greece. Uh, we were in the championship game and I got low, low cut in the, in the championship. And um, and I had that back surgery. And so I was out for like, I had back surgery and then I had a staph infection in my spine. So I was out like nine months um, and didn't know if I was going to play again, uh, wanted to. Um, but uh, during that time, I was with a huge, a, a big agent. Um, and, you know, I was close to some players that were, you know, highly touted guys that were about to come out. And, you know, he, he basically was like, you know, come learn the game and you can, um, you know, and, you know, maybe you can bring these guys on board and, and, you know, it would be a, you know, great transition for you. So, you know, while I was injured, I kind of went and I would learn the game and I kind of was interested in kind of, you know, trying to set myself up for something after if I, you know, didn't continue playing. So that's when I first kind of, uh, it kind of got into my head, like, you know, this might be an avenue for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was able to, to luckily come back and play six more years. Um, 